supportive of Dak Prescott. He said this this morning. I'm firmly, uh, firmly in the corner that uh, we've got a quarterback that we can build with and have for years to come in Dak Prescott. Okay. Make no mistake about it. Okay. But remember, Dak's making under a million dollars. What happens in six months when Dak's agent asks for $26 million? Because, by the way, Kirk Cousins asked for 35, got 28. And Alex Smith asked for 30 and got 23 and a half. Yet Dak Prescott at the current contract rate is a steal. But what do you think his agent's going to come in at? Agents don't come in low. They come in high and want to get every penny out of you. Is Jerry Jones going to be so pro Dak when they ask for $27.5 million a year? And they're not going to take anything less than $23 million? Because they're going to say, well, what about Alex Smith? Our guy's not as good as Alex Smith. And they're going to throw up numbers, and some of those are going to be the first year and a half numbers, which look really good. So it's uh, Dallas. But, you know, listen, if you get the quarterback and the coach right in this league, you can screw up in a lot of places. Dallas is doing a lot right. But they got big, big questions coming up here. Dallas has two big questions coming up in the next six months. Quarterback, head coach. And they may have to make moves with both. Joy Taylor with the news. No, 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 no. Turn on the news. This is the Herdline News. So, pretty cool moment for Drew Brees last night, becoming the NFL's all-time passing yard record leader on a touchdown pass to Traquan Smith. Pretty yeah. special moment. Followed that with his family and all the fans in the stadium. And also very special was Peyton Manning's congratulations video to Drew Brees. Have you seen this yet? Yes, yeah, I thought it was funny. Let's take a look. For a thousand days, I've held the record for all-time passing yards in the NFL. I got to tell you, it's been the greatest 1,000 days of my life. And thanks to you, that's over now. And you've ruined that for me. <laughs> In all seriousness, Drew, congratulations on this record. You've done it the right way. All your hard work and dedication have paid off. Way to go. Proud of you. Good luck the rest of the way. Uh, the reason that he's standing in front of a table with sliced tomatoes yeah. <laughs> for anyone who didn't see the whole video, it's kind of a bit they did where he's like making a salad for yes. his family. Yeah. The video was too long to show everyone, but that's why there's tomatoes there. And that was a nice little congratulations. Yeah, I mean, I think I went into last night, you know, it was one of those where all the legends were ready to congratulate him on Twitter. And he, I, Drew Brees is one of the easy ones, by the way, to root for. Howie Long always says this. You can't have two quarterbacks in the same room. He goes, they're like lead singers in bands. You can't have two lead singers. The, the quarterbacks are kind of, you know, they're kind of the guy. And there's a lot of animosity that's unspoken and a lot of competitiveness. Yeah, I think I think probably until they're retired. Yes. But because while, when they're retired. They're not competing against Yeah, me. like you see Jim Kelly and Dan Marino together and they're having the time of their lives. But but I think when they were playing, it's like a diff it's a different story because, you know, it's, it's a competitive nature Drew to the game. Drew Brees is the one quarterback I think all the great ones root for because they see the injuries. They see the San Diego situation. Like there's some, you know, Peyton Manning, number one pick. There's probably some animosity. Uh, look, at he had a paved road. His dad was a quarterback. You know, Andrew Luck's dad well, was a... has a little bit of edge to him, too, uh, despite his, you know, tomato slicing commercials. Like, oh, no, no, no. peyton has got Peyton's got people that don't like him in right, the league. Aaron right. Rodgers has those Judy's guys. Judy's has this, the likability level that we were talking about. Yes. Like, he just, he's just likable, and he'll join us later today. So Patrick Mahomes and the 5-0 Chiefs will have their toughest test to date on the road against Tom Brady and the Patriots. Brady spent his first NFL season backing up Drew Bledsoe, as we know, and Mahomes spent his rookie season backing up Alex Smith. So naturally, people are doing that comparison thing. But Brady says that is where the similarities between the beginning of their careers ends. Football was, was different then. You know, I think now I think pro football is more of glorified college football. So I think in some ways it's the transition. It's just a more similar game than what it used to be, you know, when I first started. I think football now is... is you know, with removing some of the physical elements of the game, it's just, it's more of a space game. And, you know, you see a lot of kind of college plays, you know, more in the pro game now than, than what I remember when I started. So, you know, that's just kind of how things have went over the last bunch of years. Hmm. Hmm. Well, hmm, Tom, he's hmm. not wrong. Hmm, Tom. <laughs> It is Very interesting, Tom. It's a different world now. I'm, I, I mean, if I wasn't such a good reader of Shade, I would have said that Brady was kind of taking a little, a little dick I there. Think I, I see a guy being a little, a little on the goat where we relax on on 
on praising Patrick Mahomes too much yet. He hasn't beat me. No, Tom Brady's saying, yeah, it's three games. I played 18 years. It's a slow down. I mean, listen, uh, look, comparing Patrick Mahomes to Tom Brady is obviously very silly at this point. But it also maybe ease back on the whole, like, physical element of the game. The, the NFL literally changed an entire rule to, because you're of your injury. Like, you, you were... The, the start of this whole that's not touch the quarterback thing. So it's, it's kind of benefited you a little bit throughout your career. I yeah, like it Brady, Brady, a little more juice Brady's had game. two careers. He came in where it was a run first league and it was more violent and now it's a passing league. So you can go about nine, ten years into Tom and the league shifted to benefit Tom. Yeah. There's I'm no not, he's not saying anything that is not true. It yeah. just can like you have benefited from it yes. not being as physical. Or maybe he heard that Patrick Mahomes was dunking and we called him out for not posting his dunking video. Maybe that's what that's about. Yeah. Finally, after going 0-16 last year, the Browns are 2-2-1 this year, and David Njoku says the difference is in the competitiveness that the team is showing at the end of close games. Last year, I didn't really see the fight that we had this year. You know, our, our team, you know, is definitely bought in and uh, locked in during the game. And I'm just so happy to see that during, you know, crunch times, like like the fourth quarter and overtime, you know, it, 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 it's, uh, it's it's great to see for sure. Baker doing a, a tremendous job, a job, obviously, and everyone just buying in and, and focusing in and just working, you know, as, as hard as it possibly can and uh, not fight, not quitting until the clock is 0-0, you know. He's a huge competitor, you know. He uh, like you know you, you would see him during practice working extremely hard. The, the kid loves to compete. It's yeah, contagious. Better, here's the other thing: Cleveland's got better players now. Yeah, there is. They've got good at, players. At one point or another, when you get the right players there, that's really what turns. They've got it like eight guys who are elite players: a slot receiver. Well, a I think passer. adding Jarvis Landry was obviously their a, running a, backs a, are very good. They got deal, three yes. legitimate running backs. Most teams don't have one. Baker also was a big change of culture for the Browns. It's it's okay. We can admit it. I mean, I don't have to admit it because I was saying that he should have been starting from the beginning. But you know, he's a, he's a component to the success. <laughs> David and they Joker didn't win on field goals this weekend. Well, all right. Hey, listen, a win is a win. David and Joker will be here with us uh, at 1045 today. Good stuff. Joy with the news. Well, that's the news. And thanks for stopping by. The Herd Lie News. My buddy, the Duggar, Doug Gottlieb, Fox Sports Radio, after my show, Across America. Let's bring him in, the Duggar. Weekdays, 3 to 6 Eastern, Fox Sports Radio. So I love Drew Brees. The fight is real. The struggle is real. You, you have been, uh, uh, you like Drew Brees too, but you've said there are advantages that he had that people sometimes don't mention. Well, there's, there's a couple things. Um, first, look, I don't want to take a ton of the shine off of Drew Brees. Yeah. But I don't think any of us, even though the statistical dominance is there, would say he's the greatest quarterback of all time, correct? Yeah, I don't think he's the greatest, but he's way up there. Um, he's up there. He's also helped tremendously, as was Peyton Manning, by playing indoors. That and helps. When he was with the San Diego Chargers, he had issues with arm strength. Yeah. Now, some of that is the miracle medical uh, technology that's brought him back yeah. when people thought his career was over. But yeah. a lot of it is playing indoors and playing with a great play caller. But playing indoors, he's... His, his numbers pale in comparison. His quarterback rating is 10 percentage points lower. His interceptions are up. His touchdowns are down. The wins yeah. and losses are way down when they play on the road. Yeah. So he has helped. It's, it's always been stats on steroids playing indoors. Yeah. It helped Peyton Manning for a long time, another guy who struggled with arm strength. Additionally, he runs, he runs the benefit of playing for arguably the best play caller in the last 25 years in consistently in the National Football League. Certainly, certainly an argument for that, yes. Right, so you play for a great play caller, you play in a perfect place, and, and I think one of the things that's taken away from his legacy is the fact that they had three consecutive seven and nine seasons after yeah. winning a Super Bowl. Yeah. Now, it should be pointed out, if you want to tell the true context of the story, the Saints were the Aints for a long time. Oh. They, they, everything we say about the Browns the past 10 years, we said about the Saints for, for 25 years. Yeah, that, that millennials don't get this. They were the Clippers right. in the NBA for Three decades. Right. Now, he wasn't the first quarterback to take them to the playoffs, but he was the first quarterback to win a playoff game. Yeah. That's how bad they were. But they were hurt by the fact that he took as much money as he could yeah. during his previous contract, and they couldn't feel the defense around him. He took yeah. all that money. Yeah. They couldn't put a defense around him. So the true context of it is he changed the Big Ten when he and Joe Tiller, they ran the spread really for the first time. The forward, pa like the forward pass in the Big Ten hadn't seen it, right? And that was the beginning of the end of the John Makovic era at Texas because he passed on a kid who was just down the street that would give his pinky toe to play for Texas. And, um, you know, the, the trade th that... 
that ended up bringing him to San Diego was one of the great trades in the history of the sport. And then signing ultimately with the Saints changed the sport forever. But he has been helped by playing in a dome, yeah. playing with Sean Payton. Like, and he did take a ton of money when he took that huge contract about four years ago. A little like Steve Nash in the NBA. That's who, exactly who he is. I sat down like he's Steve Nash. And by the way, Steve Nash is a Hall of Famer and great. Two-time MVP, Great. but no one would tell you he's the best point guard of all time. And was absolutely beneficiary of, of playing Mike. with Mike D'Antoni's yes. system and the evolution of the, the NBA. By the way, but I, I would argue this. I, I always say this about Bill O'Reilly. He was just swimming around until he got Roger Ailes. Is that everybody needs a kingmaker. Even Tom Brady. If, yes. you, put, if you give Carson Palmer to Belichick... <laughs> Carson Palmer's career is really amazing. And, and it's one of those things that's interesting about, I heard you ripping Aaron Rodgers. and Ripping. I, I, ripping. It, that's a, such a subjective word, it, ripping. It's not subjective. Here's, I listened to the about, show. This is ripping. Uh, I was gently. I'll, I'll, I'll bring in Joy, Joy <laughs> Taylor. Joy, um, was he pro or anti Aaron Rodgers yesterday? I mean, pro, anti. I think there's a gray area. Yeah, gray, I mean, it's you really know. gray. You, you can give someone credit for being great <laughs> while also being critical of them. He, That's he what we didn't do. have a good first half. What, what, what he do we call admittedly it? didn't have a good first half, but it's more how he's handled his coach. Right where you never hear Drew Brees say anything about his coach, understanding that his coach allows him. To, you know, Tom, and this is one of the things with Tom Brady. Whatever, whatever he's doing behind the scenes with Belichick, publicly he admits he's the greatest coach ever. Yeah, everyone has to be coached. Everyone has to be led. And I do think that. Drew Brees has benefited greatly for playing for Sean Payton, a guy who found a way to use Reggie Bush, uh, just like, you know, he drafts a kid out of Tennessee who didn't, you know, couldn't start consistently at Tennessee and makes him into as diverse a yes. weapon running back as wide receivers. And, and, all, and all I'm saying, to, and I'm, I don't think you're criticizing Drew, what I would say is there is nobody, Howard Stern was fired and then needed help, better producer, Robin Quivers. Like everybody needs help. We, I think in the Western culture, we build people up and tear them down. But the truth is behind, like they always say, behind any great CEO is a really strong wife because she's, she's running the house. Well, she, yeah, I mean, couldn't you make this argument for any great quarterback? Like Tom Brady hasn't almost, benefited greatly it, it from funny. playing with Bill I, Belichick? I did this one time. I, I tried to say this one time. Name a great quarterback without a great coach. It almost doesn't, because even Dan Fouts, you go, he didn't win. Eric Coriel, Bill Walsh. Well, you don't think Mike Tomlin's any good, so. No, I don't, I, well... <laughs> No, I mean, you've been critical of Mike Tom. I don't think that you think he's a bad coach. No, he's, I mean, it's he's, funny, nev but he's never had a below 500 record, which is, no, you know, no. I mean, like, as good as we think of Sean Payton, they had three seven and nines in a row. Granted, most of it was defense, but he is the, he is the head coach. So I, I would generally agree with you. Like, nobody does it on their own. In life. You, and, no, and you don't win a Super Bowl unless you have a defense, and you don't win consistently unless you have a great coaching staff, and you're not a great coach unless you have great ma management and leadership up top because you can't do it without the proper players and management of the salary cap. All of it does in fact work together okay so um you know it's funny about john i was thinking about john gruden and i said before the season i'm like man this is just doesn't 10 years out of silicon valley 10 years out of the nfl those are fluid businesses you can leave the post office for 10 years come back it's the post office so i look at gruden they got blasted this weekend i look at their upcoming schedule gruden said yesterday he's kind of depressed now they go to london they're sort of unraveling could i make this argument john chase money the NFL's got to see a money. Don't chase it. Chase stability. I, Raiders I, aren't stable. It was a bad gig. No, they weren't stable. That's why they had to give him 10 years. He had a lifetime appointment at ESPN, and that's why they had to give him more length, more money. And I do, I do think it stabilizes it. Do, do I think it happened as quickly as he would have, would have thought? Of course not. Uh, of course, I thought he thought he would have won a game. They should have won the Miami game if Derek Carr doesn't throw the ball, you know, doesn't lob it up in the end zone where it can be intercepted. That was like, a bad throw. It was a terrible throw. I mean, I think he's a little bit disappointed. In, I, th I think he thinks Derek Carr is a little bit better than he's actually been. Look, there's a talent mismatch when they played the Rams, when they played the Chargers. Yes, clearly. Okay? Those teams have better talent. Yeah. The other games, you know, Cleveland, they won. They should have won in Miami. Um, you know, the other games were 50-50 games. But look, it, Dan Reeves left, went to NASCAR, came back. And he, the game had passed him by, but he caught up. John Gruden will catch up eventually. They're playing the long game there. I think the two first-round picks they got for Cleo Mack 
Hopefully they use those. They, they'll have a bunch of salary cap room in the, in the coming year and in, in, in the following year after that. I, they're putting themselves in position to be successful in the long term. I think he's disappointed at how slow a start it's been yeah. and how brutal this league is. And maybe Derek Carr isn't who he thought he was. He did play eight rookies this weekend. They're not, they're not defensively, they're not good. They no, don't have players. No, but they're, he's, got, he's also kind of got to figure it out. And it takes a while now. Look, it takes Bill Belichick four games to figure it out. And Bill Belichick's been doing it successfully for 20 years in New England. How long is it going to take John Gruden, who hasn't been in Oakland with the exception of the last set, six, seven months? That's good stuff. Don't go anywhere. We got a lot. We have a ton of stuff to talk about. LeBron talked about Lonzo, the UFC mess. The Philadelphia Eagles fell in love with themselves. And like the Seahawks, they're unraveling. Doug Gottlieb, don't go anywhere. Coming back, Drew Brees, top of the hour as well. Been sleeping on a Casper mattress for over three years now. Got five in my house. I'm actually moving houses and taking all of them with me. It's a no-brainer. High quality, affordable price. All right, cool and comfortable. Back alignment. Had another seven-night hour sleep night last night. Over 35,000 five-star reviews for Casper.com code HERD. And by the way, if you use the code, that gets you $50 off select mattresses. Terms and conditions do apply. They ship it to you for free, and I'm not sure there's any business in America that offers this. They let you sleep on it for 100 nights. And if you don't like it, they take it out. Ship it out for free and refund you every penny. And the reason they offer it, you won't do that. Casper.com code HERD, H-E-R-D, and that gets you 50 bucks toward select mattresses. It is a no-brainer. Comes in a box so small, hard to believe there's a mattress in there. You don't need shippers. You don't need movers. Bring it inside, down the hall. Casper.com code HERD. Terms and conditions apply.